We are less than 100 days away from the NFL season. Never too early to do power rankings. Now, I'm not a guy that's going to rank them 1 through 10. I'm a guy that's going to rank them Super Bowl, playoff contender, or better luck next year. I don't like to put rankings on things because I think when you get towards the top, it's very minimal difference between these teams. And honestly, I'm just not a numbers guy. You know, if you want to tell me Michael Jordan's the GOAT, Michael Jordan's the GOAT. Why do we need to figure out if Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time or, or LeBron's the greatest of all time or Wilt's the greatest of all time or Kareem's the greatest of all time? Why can't we do a pyramid? This is what I like to do, a pyramid. There's your tier one guys, your tier two guys, tier three, so on and so forth. That's what I'm bringing pre-NFL season. I did AFC. If you missed out, go to the iHeartRadio app, search Zach Harris Sports. Check out AFC power rankings, Super Bowl contender, playoff contender, or better luck next year. Now, the AFC is stacked. When it comes to the NFC, not so much. We're going to start off with the better lucks next year. And that goes with the New York Giants, who brand new coach, you bring in Brian Dable, brand new general manager. I absolutely love what they did in the first round of the NFL draft. I think they did a little bit of reaching after that, but who am I? I'm not a scout, so I can't tell you exactly, you know, who they took and why they took and, you know, how they fit into their scheme. Um, I do like the wide receiver they got from Kentucky. I thought they drafted him a little too early, but guess what? If he's your guy, you go ahead and get your guy. That being said, I don't think Daniel Jones is going to be the answer. You know, a lot of people can blame Jason Garrett. They can blame the head coaches that have come through there. They can blame Dave Gettleman for never getting the offensive line. But I've seen Daniel Jones make the same mental mistakes over and over and over and over again. And that's something that he needs to be taught out of. And going into his fourth season, if he hasn't gotten that out of his system, I don't know if he's ever going to get that out of his system. That being said, this is the last final straw, the final hope. You break in the camel's back or you're riding it into the sunset. That being said, New York Giants, better luck next year. Next on that list, Cleveland or the Chicago Bears, not the Cleveland Bears, Chicago Bears. They got a brand new general manager there. They got a brand new head coach. Justin Fields needs to get put on the right track. This is a team that has a lot of holes, and I feel bad for Justin Fields because I do love his talent. I do love his upside, but the Bears are a far, far, far roster away from competing for a playoff spot. This is a team that has too many bared cupboards to be considered a playoff team. And ultimately, I'm hoping Justin Fields doesn't get his confidence knocked loose and succeeds in this league because I always root for a young, talented quarterback to be put in the right situation. And unfortunately, the Bears have never been the right consider uh, consideration for any quarterback. Jay Cutler has been able to overcome a lot in his career to probably be the best quarterback in Bears history. But I don't know if Justin Fields can mentally overcome all the hurdles he has to with a Bears organization that has never been able to build around a quarterback. Next on the list, the Detroit Lions, they are not a playoff contender. They're going to be a heck of a lot better than they were last year. You know, they added tremendous amount of talent. Jared Goff is a very solid quarterback. He can win you some games. I don't think he's ever going to be a Super Bowl caliber quarterback. And miss me with that. He made the Super Bowl with the Rams because that was a year where people were trying to figure out Sean McVay. Once Jared Goff in the playlist uh, playbook got open more, Jared Goff got exposed for who he was. But Sean McVay, his offensive genius, his leadership, hid a lot of indeficiencies in Jared Goff's game in a Super Bowl run. But that being said, the Lions have two first rounders. They need to figure out Jared Goff the answer. They could potentially walk away from his contract this year or next year, depending on how they like his um, talent and what he could potentially bring in leading a young man. Next on the list, the Atlanta Falcons. They got Desmond Ritter in the draft. They brought in Marcus Mariota. It's not going to be enough. This is a team that has a lot of holes as well. I, I wouldn't put them on the Bears level. They're a little, they got more talent than the Bears, but ultimately this is an organization that they're headed in the right direction. They're just not there yet. And 
kudos to Matt Ryan for being an absolute professional while they looked into the Deshaun Watson trades and then ultimately saying, you know what? My heart is broken. I wanted to be here, but you wanted to move on from me. It's late in my career. I would like to win. Can you put me in a situation to win? So shout out to the Atlanta Falcons for doing that. Shout out to Matt Ryan for being a professional. That being said, this is not a playoff contending team. Carolina Panthers. Doesn't matter who's back there. Give me any of your quarterbacks back there. Does not matter. Carolina Panthers. Offensively, they got some pieces there. I need my running back to stay healthy. I need you to stay healthy, Christian McCaffrey. Because if you do, maybe we see that type of talent from Sam Darnold or can Sam Darnold shake that I'm seeing ghosts type of habit to become the quarterback we all expected him to be when he was drafted third overall to the Jets. That being said, whether he plays well or not, this is not a playoff contending team just yet. I'm not a big believer in this head coach. I did like him when they first brought him in. He just has not shown me enough to cover up deficiencies, to play to the strength of his team. He just has not put people in the right right position to win. I'm not a big fan of him. That being said, Panthers, better luck next year. Seattle, they're clearly not trying to win. They finally draft offensive linemen after they trade Russell Wilson, which was basically just a slap in the face. But Geno Smith, Drew Locke, Jacob Eason, doesn't matter. Give me any of those three. This is a team that knows who they are. They're going to build defensively. And then offensively, they bring in Kenneth Walker III from Michigan State. They are going to go back to their Legion of Boom back uh, days where they're going to be a run-first team. They need a quarterback to win them games when it's time to. But all they're going to go defensively. They want to be a defensive team. That being said, they are far away from contending for a playoff spot. They are looking to just add as much talent as they can, and they're not looking to win. Playoff contender, real quickly, Dallas Cowboys. I'd like to put them as a Super Bowl contender, but whatever the curse may be around them, they just can never elevate their game. They can never understand the playoff game mentality for whatever reason they show up late it just they need to understand when it comes playoff time you have to play full fourth quarters or four quarters you can't play late in the game you can't try to make comebacks you can't do this you can't do that Dak Prescott needs to elevate his game now I do think Ezekiel Elliott's gonna back uh bounce back I do think he's been dealing with some injuries Obviously, the older you get, the more hits you take. It's harder to come back as a running back. They got a two-headed monster there, Tony Pollard, Ezekiel Elliott. I do think they bounce back just perfectly fine. I just don't see them being a Super Bowl contender until they prove me wrong. Philadelphia Eagles, shout out to Howie Roseman for doing everything right to build a playoff team around Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts, this is your opportunity to show that you can be the guy. And even if you don't show you're the franchise guy, if you're moving in the right direction and you look like you've tremendously built on everything that you did last year, then you could be the answer. Eagles do have two first round picks. This is a playoff team. They got a lot of veterans, a lot of aging players, a lot of guys that know how to win in this league. There is no reason they shouldn't be a playoff contender. Next on this list may surprise you. Washington Commanders. They were a playoff contending team last year. Now, I know they went 7-10 and 10 last year with inconsistencies at the quarterback, a quarterback that is a better number two, number three than he would ever be as a starter in this league. Sorry, Taylor Heineke. You're a great story. You almost knocked off the Bucks on their Super Bowl run, but ultimately, you are not the answer. You never will be the answer in this league. And I do not mean to be brash about that. I apologize. Carson Wentz, he's had inconsistencies, but let's be honest. He is an upgrade over Taylor Heineke. And if this defense can avoid getting off to the slow start that they did last year and be back to that defense that they were two years prior, and then you get a Carson Wentz that is an upgrade over Taylor Heineke, even though he's inconsistent, I think you see big things from the commanders. I do think they're a playoff contender. 
this offense is going to be more geared to what Carson Wentz loves to do, and that's hit the home run ball every single play. You got two burners there. You got Scary Terry and then Dotson from Penn State. This offense is geared towards what Carson Wentz likes to do. Now, it's up to Carson to make those plays, but ultimately, he is an upgrade over Taylor Heineke. They were a playoff contender last year. They got off to a really slow start defensively. They didn't have a quarterback that could make plays. Now they do. He's inconsistent. Can he put it together? If he can, this is a playoff contending team. Minnesota Vikings. They just missed the playoffs last year. Kirk Cousins is a very good quarterback. I think he's underrated by most. He is a playoff contending quarterback year in, year out. You have Justin Jefferson there. You have Adam Thielen. You got a great run game. Defensively, they were terrible last year, horrid last year. They've added a lot of pieces on the defensive side of the ball. How quickly can they come together and make defensive adjustments going into this season? And Kirk Cousins, as long as he can avoid those mental mistakes late in games, they're a playoff contender. Next on the list, New Orleans Saints. Now, Jameis Winston played well before he went down with injury. Jameis Winston's a number one overall pick. He has number one overall pick talent. We all know that. He needs to be able to put it together. The great thing about, you know, Sean Payton stepping away is that you just elevated a guy that's been there. You elevated a guy that's been on the team, been on the coaching staff. So there's no transition period as far as a coaching standpoint. So that bodes well for Jameis Winston. This team is built solidly defensively. They added some pieces offensively. Jameis Winston, if he can continue to make the right step and play the way that he did early in the season last year before going down with that horrid injury, the Saints are a playoff team. Last on the list for playoff contenders, Arizona Cardinals. As long as you have Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury in a running gun offense, this is a type of team. The air raid attack is always going to get you some wins. It's also going to get you some losses. You know, when teams start to defensively figure out their identity later in seasons, it's going to be harder to score on teams later in seasons. And we've seen that struggle with the Cardinals. They haven't been able to make adjustments later in the season. When teams figure out their identity on the defensive side of the ball, they can't win big. They can't win late. That's why they're a playoff contender and not a Super Bowl contender. Could they eventually elevate themselves to being a Super Bowl contender later this year? Absolutely. But 100 days away from the NFL season or less than 100 days away from the NFL season, they are a playoff contender. Super Bowl contenders, there's really only four. The Packers, because I love their coach, and Aaron Rodgers, you don't want to bet against Aaron Rodgers. We've seen what happens when you make them mad back-to-back MVP-type seasons. Now, I do think he has a tendency to not be able to make big-time plays in the playoffs, but I think maybe he starts to feel a sense of urgency, and maybe losing Devontae Adams was the best thing for him because he'll spread the ball out more when it comes playoff time instead of leaning on Devontae Adams. Now you got two great running backs there, two potential number one running backs there. You got... The kid from Notre Dame, uh, not Notre Dame, uh, North Dakota State there, who's tremendous as an athlete. I think he's going to do a great job there with Aaron Rodgers, building a relationship there. They're a Super Bowl contender. Anytime you got Tom Brady, the Buccaneers are going to be a Super Bowl contender. They knew Tom Brady was coming back. They built around Tom Brady. Yet again, Tom Brady has a lot of say in that organization, and they are all in on Super Bowl runs as long as Tom Brady is their quarterback. They are a Super Bowl contender. Next on the list, Los Angeles Rams. They won the Super Bowl. They got to get over that mentality of, I won a Super Bowl. They need to realize 2022-2023 season is a new season. Nobody cares what you did last year. You have to reestablish yourself as a Super Bowl contending team. If they can get over that hump, if they can stay hungry, if they can run faster because 100 dogs run faster, they are a Super Bowl team as long as Matt Stafford's there. Last on the list, surprise, 49ers. And this all depends on what they get 
from Jimmy Garoppolo slash Trey Lance. Now, I think Trey Lance is ultimately going to be the starter, and Jimmy Garoppolo, if he remains there, will be the backup as a tremendous veteran backup for them. And they can afford that because they've built the team the right way. But ultimately, defensively, this is an outstanding team. They're going to run heavy. And guess what happens late in games? Guess what happens in January and February? If you can run the ball and you can play defense, you can be a Super Bowl contender. That's why the 49ers, even with 100 days away, are a Super Bowl contender with and without knowing who's going to be the starting quarterback and who ultimately is going to perform at a high level at the quarterback position.